Good morning, and welcome to Mornings with Mary. Today we're going to talk about when you feel like you're drowning, oh, because your child's behind, and how they can swim back into it. So if it's your first time here, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. As always, hashtag replay. If you're watching on the replay, like and share, and we're going to talk now. Are you guys ready? We're going to take off our awesome fishy thing here, because I think it's cute. And there we are. So this morning we really want to talk about the fear that from the parents point of view that oh my god my child is behind. I brought them home from school where everything was supposed to be perfect. Where they're supposed to be on target and they had teachers that were qualified and they were on grade level. And then you bring them home because something is going odd. Like our coloring here. I go from orange to like white. It's really kind of cool. And suddenly you find out your kid is really far behind. So you're freaking out because, why does it keep doing that? Because you um, have this fear that you're not qualified to teach your child, right? But then you get them home and the people who are qualified didn't do their job. They rarely ever do. Yeah, well, they're trying to corral like 25 kids. I'm sorry, how can you corral 25 kids who have different backgrounds, different needs, different emotions, different challenges, and teach them? in one way, which is what they call, um, oh, I don't remember the word now. I had it just a second ago in my brain. I have Benadryl hangover brain. So if I'm like lagging on words, please forgive me. I had like 90 milligrams of Benadryl yesterday. Yeah, awesomeness. Um, but basically, the I'm gonna call it the, the talk only, the lecture reason. Okay, so when you are lecturing, people don't listen. And kids certainly don't listen. Because kids need that interaction. They are born curious. They are born wanting to learn. Good morning. And so when we sit them in the classroom with someone want, 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 Charlie Browning at them, they're not going to learn and they're going to tune out. Okay? That was me. Like, hello, there's a window there. Oh my God, there's birds. Let's look at those. Squirrel. I know, so much better, squirrel. Um, so you bring them home and you're like, okay, so we're going to homeschool because school isn't working for you. Great. Elizabeth came out in seventh grade, so I'm going to use that as the example. Bring you home in seventh grade. We're going to do seventh grade math. Nope. Yeah, that, that shit don't work. Okay? Took her three years, and we've talked about this before, three years of de-schooling. Three. I don't care what they say, it's a month per school year. No. That's a great guideline, but that didn't work for her. It's, it's different for every child, all right? So when she was finally ready to learn, she came to me at age 15 and said, Mom, I'm finally ready to learn. I need some more structure. And I said, great, let's go get you tested. So that we knew where she was. We, we suspected she had some learning disabilities and stuff. So we went to a neuroeducational psychologist. And a neuroeducational psychologist tests for not only learning disabilities, but other neurological disruptions. Like Asperger's, ADHD, learning disabilities, all of that stuff. So that's all in there. It's a nice, pretty little package. It's not paid for by insurance, and it's generally between $1,000 and $2,000, depending on where you live in the country. If you need it, save up. It is worth it. Because you know exactly what you're dealing with and how to get from point A to point B. Guess what we found out? Not only does my sweet girl share my wonderful disability of dyscalculia, which means we have zero concept of numbers. Like, zero, not there. Horrible. Great artistic ability. Look at my wonderful Wonder Woman she made me yesterday. But zero dollars. It's just, it's just not there. Zero, zero figures. And it's all right, but she was doing third grade math at 15. Now, granted, we took those three years off, so we'll back off and say seventh grade. Third grade math. Let that sink in. She didn't know her multiplication tables. She couldn't do fractions. She couldn't do, what else? Um, you even struggled with you subtraction. You struggled with subtraction. And long addition. Yes, and long addition. Oh, that's what calculators are for. So now I wouldn't even mess up with a calculator because I would my eyes would skip numbers. Oh, that's true. Well, welcome to dyscalculia. It's what it is. So what do you do if your child is behind? <coughs> Apparently, you listen to dogs bark. Um, you have to relax. It's gonna be okay because when they are ready to catch up, when their brain is ready, they'll do it. And that's like the best thing. So for Elizabeth here, she literally did six years of math. Six years in yeah. 90 days. Why? Because we didn't push it. 
We no for those three years we did not for push math. For three years you didn't push it, but when I wanted to graduate, man, we were well, just like, you gotta do this. Yeah, because or you have to pay us back for another year of schooling. No, then you pay for it because we've already paid for four years. Yeah, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, you like, pay us back. Right? Yeah, it was like yeah because we'd already paid for four years, and if you don't do the work that you knew you had to do to get the end result and the outcome that you wanted, and you didn't take the action it took to get there. You need to be responsible for that at that point. You're 18 years old. Welcome to the real world, baby. So, the reality is this. I wasn't 18. When you graduated, yes, you were. Yeah, but I was 17 when they had to do that. Yes, when you were, yes, because you were going to be 18 upon completion. The next year, if you did not graduate that year, if you did not step up and yeah. do what was required, that you knew going into it, that you agreed to going into it, yeah, then you had to be responsible. Just what it is. That's the real world. So the gist of it is this, is if your child is behind, don't freak out. Start where they are, wherever they are. You're like getting your face half cut off. So what can you do? Relax, breathe, give them an assessment test, but then do other things so that you know where they're coming from. Not everybody learns in a workbook. Not everybody learns from a textbook. Not, Not everybody everybody learns willy nilly. That's right. I mean, some people really need that structure. And for math, math is structure whether you like it or not, but there are other ways you can learn it. You can learn it through manipulatives, you can learn it through song, YouTube is great for that. There are lots of different options that you have. If they're behind in reading comprehension, again, that's just practice. Sometimes, like, if you have a retention retrieval problem, the re it's not going to be there, all right? So in order to get that reading comprehension down pat, you have to read things that interest that child. Let them read whatever they want. I don't care if it's Captain Underpants. If they can comprehend what they're reading and tell it back to you, don't make them write it. Just have a conversation. Just relax and understand that when their brain is ready, it will happen. Do some brains need different training? Yes. Right? Some people, if you go to the gym, they're what's called pre-built and they show right away. And they're like this big muscular thing and they've worked out for six weeks and you're like, damn, like, you're popping muscles everywhere. <laughs> All right? And other people have a different body type. And they're never going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. doesn't matter if they do the same workouts every day. But as long as they're healthy for them, that's what matters. And really that's the whole gist of this is work with your child where they are. Don't berate them. Don't worry about them being behind. They're behind what? They're behind some scale that some person who never taught, who probably doesn't even have kids, or is disconnected from their kids, sat in an office in Washington and decided. Yep. Yep. That's, yep. What, that's what they did. So take your child off the timeline. It's their timeline. Their reality. Their place. And it won't be linear. No, it won't be. It's going to be like... Yeah, like that. Yeah, and it, it will be. What what advice do you have? Because you were on the receiving end. I was always on the end of this has to get done. I had no choice to have it relaxed or brought back. It was pass or fail, and if I got a D, I was psyched because I worked my ass off for that D. I've gotten Ds and worked my ass off for them. I know, and those are ones I'm proud of. I'm more proud of a D in a subject that you work hard on than an A in art. Like, whatever. You could sleep through art class and get an A. Yeah. Um... But when you are behind, what advice do you have for parents for their kids so that they better understand? Don't push it. Okay. Until it's... Or don't push it unless it's going to matter <coughs> in the long run. Yeah. Well, what to you do you think matters in the long run? To me, I don't think knowing the <coughs> dates of history matter in the long run. If you need to know them, you learn them. Yeah. Um, what, Sarah, and she should open it. But what do you think really does matter in the long run? Knowing math, the four basic applications of math, yeah, is important in the long run because now you like you're having to use it to create your line sheets to figure out wholesale prices for her artwork. Hello, IndigoChildShop.com. Um, but that's how you're using math. It's an actual application of it. Yeah. Um, of all the subjects that you had to take, which ones really apply to your life? Not social studies because I'm not a history teacher, True. and I don't plan on being one. I hate history. Uh, 
probably basic math and reading. Yeah. Because those things you're going to use all the time, every day of your life. You know, find things that they're interested in. We do fractions for Sarah through, through cooking. It doesn't have to be just a worksheet. All right, so we're going to wrap it up today because we obviously have Barkety Bark Dogs, and I'm yeah. on Benadryl hangover, and she hasn't had enough coffee yet. Yeah. But if you guys have any questions about, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Write them below. Let me know. Basically, just relax. They're going to get there when they get there. This isn't the Boston Marathon. And even those who run the Boston Marathon, not everybody comes in first. And really, that's okay. If it's your child's goal to come in first, then you ask how they need your support. But if they're just limping along in this marathon of life, give them some water from the side and encourage them and understand they're going to end their race when they get there. And whenever they get there, it's going to be right for them. Take off that timeline for other people. Because it's not everyone. It's your child. So with that, I'm going to say adios. I will see you tomorrow morning. And it's another day of Mornings with Mary. Remember, hit like, hit share, hit heart. Go from there. Talk with you later. Bye-bye.